What are you trying to Life. Welcome to Train for Life, a podcast brought to you by ISI Elite Training. I'm Adam Rice, founder and CEO, and we'll be hosting this alongside Amanda Hall, our COO. Tune in weekly as we explore topics on personal and professional development to help you level up in all aspects of your life. We call this Training for Life. All right, guys, today's episode is all around confidence. So how to build it, um, how to build it personally. So this is, I think, I would say this is a topic that everybody at some point in your life, you're thinking about confidence, you struggle with confidence, um, the highs and lows, the changes of life, the seasons of life. So I'm going to flip it to you, Adam. Uh, You know, when it comes to confidence, the question of how to build it. How do you personally feel like you build confidence? Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think there's several ways um, that we that we talk. I mean, it, it, to me, it, it it comes down to like foundational, right? And then you build from there. So I think, obviously, I'm a little biased because we're in the fitness industry, but I do think that confidence in all areas. So if you if you break down the the different areas of your life, it comes down like to the four F's. So your fitness, your family, so your relationships, your finances, your career, right? And and then also your faith. I think all of those are born out of a foundation. Mm -hmm. Like you will gain inherently more confidence in each of those quadrants if you are you have confidence in your body. Um meaning you're eating right you you have mental clarity because without mental clarity, without, um, without honestly, like I know a lot of people and I've been there, but you know, it starts with putting that shirt on and yeah. not having con- like that starts your day. If you're looking in the mirror and you don't have confidence in that person, that's going to go show up to that meeting. That's going to show up to be that dad or that mom that's going to show up in that relationship. And I think it carries over into every area of every one of those quadrants to having tough conversations to you know even uh, honestly in your relationships in your sex life like literally every area yep. right it, it carries over to so i think when it look when we look at for me it's foundationally starting with your body and, and doing that and then obviously there's some other areas um but for you like what what would you say outside of your body and, and being confident in, in who you are. Um, that, that yeah. I up. mean, I, I agree with that. I, and I think I kind of go back to the, to have the body that you want to have. Let's just use fitness as example. Yeah. It also could be the job that you would want to have, yep. the family, the relationship, um, whether that's, you know, with your kids or through marriage or your friendships, you know, I really take that back to making a commitment to, to yourself to do the things that you've committed and want to do. Yeah. I think a lot of times we want to do like, we want to get up that hour early earlier and, you know, have time for self-development or maybe that's the only time you could work out. So you'd have to get up earlier to make that happen for yourself. Um, maybe it's committing to, you know, some type of habit that you want to do, or maybe there's a, you know, a course you've always wanted to take or talent you've wanted to achieve. And then we say we want to do it and then we don't do it. And, yeah. And when we, when we don't, I think we're sending a message to ourselves that, um, that, that either we can't do it. It's, it's like a trust issue. I feel like to build confidence, you have to deliver on the things that you tell yourself you want to do. Meaning every time you do it, you get more and more confident and you trust yourself more and more. And I think that comes out. I think there's a result of it, meaning your body would change or, yep. but I think it starts with being committed to the things that you have committed to yourself to do by showing up for them. Yep. You know, and I think a lot of times that's a struggle because either we try to flip everything at once so we don't take it in, in stride or, um, you know, we, we don't, we don't show up for ourselves. We don't do those things. And then after a while you start to believe the messaging in your head that, you know, you can't do it. Yep. Yeah. No. So if I just break down what you just said, I said the result Right. So I said the outcome, the, the having and, and I'm not talking about having a six pack and, and all that. I'm talking about just having confidence in your body um, to provide mental clarity, mental health and all that. Right. What you were talking about was actually the actions or the process. Right. To get that outcome. 
So my question for you, because you went way more granule, which I 100% agree with, because I think if you, if your goal is the, actually Alex Hermosi, I just saw it in a reel of his the other day, but he said your goal should not be the result, your goal should be the process. Yeah. Right, so your goal should not be to lose 10 pounds, your goal should be to get to the gym four days a week. If you switch that, then ultimately you're gonna get the outcome you want. But with that, you mentioned it and you said a lot of times people try and change everything at once. So mm-hmm. when you look at people, I mean, you've led a ton of people over the course of your career. What what do you see as the people that do make changes, that do grow versus those that, you know, maybe are like, I'm going to read 12 books uh, a month and, and go to all these personal yeah. development conferences and then they end up doing none of it, right? Yeah. I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, or what do they have? I mean, like, you know. What are they doing? What are those people yeah. that, is it that they're focusing on one thing at a time? Yeah, I think um, I've seen two approaches. Do I think that sometimes you can have multiple areas that you change at one time and commit and deliver? Yes. Yep. I think your support system and your environment have to be in such a good space to do that. And I don't, I, I would say for most people, that's not the norm, right? There's stress factors, especially when you get into the land of, you know, having children, like there's unknowns and things yeah. that happen. So I think if you feel that there's all these areas you want to change, pick one of them and compound it. So you take that one item that you want to change and you work on it and you give yourself a month and then you compound it maybe two weeks, but I think the the more you do that, you're gradually changing pieces. And think what you could change if you had 12 things you wanted to do differently mm-hmm. and you did one for a month and compound it. Think at the end of one year how different you're going to be as a person. Yeah. Um, but I do agree with you. I think the result is what then really fuels that confidence, um, whether that's through fitness or that you did it. Like every time you achieve something new, you gain a new skill set, you, you know, uh, if it's physical, you know, whatever that is you achieve, I think you are building that confidence from the result. But I think it starts with making the decision to break that down, identify what they are. Um, what are those things that you really want to do? What's your, and I know we're going to talk about this later about having vision. Um, and then what are the things that you need to do to get there? Um, is it a course you need to take? Is it, um, is it a room of people that you need to try to get in with? Is it, you need to spend more time. You know, sometimes confidence comes down to we don't create enough capacity in our life for ourselves to work out, um, you know, pour into, listen to a podcast, meditate, whatever that is. Yep. So find a way to create that capacity in your life so that you can do it. But, I mean, that's I mean, that's really kind of when I think of it. I mean, I'm curious, like, how do you do that? If you're talking about yeah. a result, like, how do you mentally take that on? Yeah. Well, I think from – most people's limitations to confidence is is equal to the experience of their life so far, right? So if you grew up in um, if you grew up in a household that had a certain belief around money, had a certain mm. belief around fitness, then you, that's going to be the level of your confidence. So to change that, you have to step into. You talked about atmosphere and environment. Right. You have to step into an environment, and that's got to be intentional, right? No one's going to do that for you at the end of the day. But if you radically, I've seen where I've seen people change the most is just picking them up and putting them in a different environment because ultimately like you got any of you sports fans out there will will see like you know when a player is say a baseball player is hitting 200 and all of a sudden he gets traded he's around a new locker room he's got a fresh start and all of a sudden he's hitting 350 nothing changed other than his atmosphere right the people he's around so for me though it it was where my self-confidence comes in is especially in my career in my finances it's honestly all around making courageous decisions so it, it's taking mm-hmm. risks right and so the more courageous i am the more confidence i get because you know uh, another alex hermosi i heard it on his podcast the other day he was talking about well if if somebody broke up with you like the first time it's going to suck. But what if they broke up? Like, what if you went through that 100 times? Right. 100 times isn't that bad, right? And it's the same thing with building confidence. It's, you know, the tough conversations, the opening, uh, starting a business or whatever it is. And actually, you and I had a conversation. Um, this must have been a couple of weeks ago, but we were just talking about, like, your growth and, like, where you wanted to go in your career. And you talked about, you know, you were a huge part of building a brand from 17 units to 270 units and but you knew 
even though it was probably really hard to step away and you were comfortable to gain that next level of confidence in your life to where you wanted to go and accomplish your vision, you knew you had to step out of that right? and into something else because, you know, I don't know if you want to go into that at all. Well, I mean, it's true. That, I mean, sometimes when you've achieved something, I also knew where I wanted to go. I needed to prove to myself that I could, I don't say replicate what I had done. Right but it wasn't an anomaly yeah. uh, and not that I didn't believe in myself or my abilities, but, um, taking that skill and using it somewhere else, um, multiple times yep. for, for me to go in my, you know, in my vision on the other side of that from starting, you know, something from fruition on my own or yeah. consulting, whatever that would be. I knew I needed to prove that to myself more than once. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, a track and it definitely is... creates a level of um, confidence in that ability. Um, it also, I feel like you're right. I think anytime you have that boost of courage to do something that feels really hard, mm -hmm. and you don't step away from it, it's you know when you when it's easy to say no because you could. Yep. Um, I think on the other side of that is extreme courage. It also builds that courage muscle so that you're willing to do it again and becoming and putting yourself in uncomfortable situations becomes less uncomfortable. Yep. Um, and I think highly driven people do that over and over again. And that's yep. really the only difference. There's not a big difference between someone who is, and I know we're going to talk about habits right. for being successful, but there's, I think sometimes people associate confidence to people who are successful. There's really maybe i mean i think they are more confident but i think it's because they took they created that decision to continue to take those steps forward and they didn't say no right They're definitely i will say this from being around a lot of millionaires a lot of very successful people they definitely are not smarter than the normal person right it's they literally they put themselves under tension they put themselves in uncomfortable they take risks and that ultimately builds, I think, that muscle of self-confidence. But a lot of people just think, like, man, they're just so much smarter. It's, like, completely opposite. They, right. They're smart because they hire really smart really people. Really smart people, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so I would say the last thing, and we've really talked about this, but for me to wrap it up is I, at Iron U, which is our, um, it's our training here that we do at, at ISI Elite Training um, before locations launch, I tell facility managers all the time, I say, what you guys are about to embark on is the number one resume builder because you guys are starting a location from zero members. It is your number one resume builder because no one can ever take those results away from right. you, right? Hey, I developed a location with 250, 300 members. And so getting results ultimately is going to strengthen that confidence. So whether it's getting results in, in your body or in your marriage or in your um, your finances, I think that is a, a muscle that ultimately if you get those results, which then boils down to, like you said in the very beginning, was focusing on the process and making the process your goal. So whatever area that's in is how how can I really dial in and say, okay, if I want to make $100,000 this year and I'm in sales, I know that I need to make, your process would be around making 25 outbound phone calls rather than making $100,000, right. right? And that's and, ultimately- And ultimately it's starting, figuring out what that process and starting with at least one thing which I think everybody could listen to this today and say, okay, this is one area that I have always wanted to do mm -hmm. or a goal I have or vision start with one thing. Yep. I mean, literally just starting with one thing and after a couple of weeks, you'll already start to build that you'll see a result. Yep. Like you said, and yep. you'll have confidence from it. So I think if I'm, if I would give one takeaway from this, it would be don't wait write something down and start it tomorrow. You have plenty of time to figure out the big picture, yes. but start something, you know, versus waiting. It's not going to get any easier. You're not going to build that confidence muscle if you sit around and wait. Yep. Amazing. So to wrap this episode, guys, really the, the overarching theme here is it's in your control, right? So to build more confidence, you control that 100%. You can't put that into the, the arms or decision of anybody else. And it's actually really simple. It's about being... Uh, very intentional with that decision and understanding that putting yourself outside the comf your comfort zone is going to drive more self-confidence through that. So until next time, we will see you on the turf. Thanks.